Right, good afternoon YouTube. So, exciting stuff has been happening here in the workshop and at uh, Treasure Divers HQ. So, you know what I'm like with ladders, dive ladders. I always like a nice comfortable dive ladder. You've got to have a nice comfortable dive ladder because otherwise it just ruins your dive. So, uh, here it is. Right, so here we have the main bracket. This will be mounted permanently on the boat uh, via these screws here. Uh, some stainless steel M10s in there and there. Now, to make sure you get a good fixing, these are hollow. So I want to be able to get to the underside of them. So what I'm going to do, there's no other way to get into these boxes, into these panels. I thought it, I thought you could get to them from by taking the foam filled tubes off, but you can't. I took the foam filled tubes off. And you, it, it's blanked. So the only way is to cut into here. So I'm going to cut into here uh, with a big round hole saw and then once I have then put the nuts on the backs of the uh, bolts and probably put a plate on as well, a supporting plate under there, um, I will then replace it with a nice little hatch like this one. I've ordered uh, two, so one for here and one for here, but you can probably spot the obvious that this seat is in the way so to be able to cut the hole out in there the seat's got to come out which is going to be a big pain so here is the new dive ladder I know it looks a bit of a monster but you know for me it's all about comfort and ease of getting in and out of the vessel. You see lots of different dive ladders on the market, but to be honest, they're all so small and flimsy and you've still got a lot of hassle trying to negotiate them. With this, you simply just walk up it just like you do walking up a pair of stairs. Nice hand rails. You can actually go, you can actually uh, get in and out of the boat, fully kitted up. So for people that don't like um, falling off backwards off of the side of the rib, then this is ideal. Anyway, that's the mount, which has been uh, cleverly put together for me by Grant Engineering up the road. Let's see what it looks like with the ladder on. So here we are. <clears throat> that's it slotted in. And that's literally what we're going to do is just slot that in there from the boat. Once we get to our dive site, we will then just, uh, the ladder will be in, kept on the deck. And then once we get to the dive site, we'll just lean over and uh, pop it in. There we go. I'm expecting that to take uh, a good weight. So, I mean, I'm knocking on 18 stone myself, so. Uh, all muscle, of course. 18 stone of muscle. But, uh, <laughs> he says tongue in cheek. But, um, we'll see. I think it all depends on the fixings, doesn't it, really? So these are going to be bolted in nicely. These are going to be bolted in. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Right, so the, uh, the little hatches have arrived, which I'm going to put, uh, once I drill the holes out, with that big, mean... Hole saw. 
Uh, I'll be able to get to the inside of this to put the nuts on and then um, I'll fit one of these in its place where the hole is. So after a few attempts I'm pretty certain I've got the centre Got it. Should we have a look inside? Ooh, interesting. So there's, because what I'm fa what I'm really interested in is how this thing was put together. I can't see anything, I'm just putting the camera inside so I'll be able to have a look at it afterwards. Right, so this is just a retrofit. Now I know that it's okay. We've got a little bit of work to do on this, on the fitting, because when it's been welded, as it, as you know probably, that when you weld stuff, it contracts and distorts and moves. And that's what's happened here. It, it doesn't fit in these as smooth as I'd like, so we're gonna get it back in the workshop and, uh, and get it sort of twisted and bent a little bit, get some heat on it, so that it fits a bit better. And while you're here, I might as well give you a little update on the rest of the vessel. So um, I've got the Parson 20 horsepower out of the workshop and um, got her in the water there to um, make sure it works before we take her out. Um, it is good. It, I mean, it's okay. It's brand new. It's not. It's not done about an hour. So since I've had it, although it's getting a bit battered now, but uh, that's just from storage. Um, in fact, I'll fire it up now for you and uh, show you. I did fire it up about two or three hours ago, so it's not it's not cold. Um, so let's see how easy it starts. I'd, I'd actually, to be honest, I'd like it to start a lot a bit easier than it does, but we'll see. See what you think. running it's quite quiet as well well it's a four stroke and it's brand new so it should be quiet shouldn't it really see one thing I do like about it, the gear change a lovely handle here nice big robust handle and it's a quick in it goes reverse Straight out. <laughs> so, yeah, very nice gear change. Let's hope it pushes this uh, old uh, tub 
along nicely. So here's something you might want to do to your boat, uh, just to tidy it up a little bit. These um, these caps, I mean these are all old and cracked and faded and they've got various different paints on them. Uh, you know, they don't look very nice, but to replace them just costs a few pence. There we go. Look at the difference there. They're a nice snug fit as well, they won't come off on their own. So I don't remember if I've mentioned it before, but I turned around these, these were facing on the inside um, because I want to be able to put a, a, um, a ratchet strap around there and under there just to hold the back on. Right, so I've just found another, well I haven't just found them, I knew they were there, but now I'm actually in the boat and with a screwdriver in my hand I can I can take them out, but there's just a couple of random screws stuck into the deck. Um, so they're coming out. So all these things unfortunately add up to why we've got a spongy deck. And that's because, um, you know, the, you, you drill a hole like that into the, into the um, plywood, which is all it is underneath there. And uh, you've got uh, straight away ingress with water, so that's what you expect really. One little tip though, when you do remove stuff like this, don't throw away the screws because usually they're stainless steel and these are the only screws that you can really use on boats so they're always worth keeping. Obviously chuck that bit of random plastic away but... As I mentioned before, unfortunately, we need to, that plate that goes across here, we need access to this hatch as well. So, I'm going to have to do something with this seat. Cut it back maybe, cut it to here. If I cut it to here, then we still have that rest of it there. I'll be able to get down with the Saw. Hmm. I have a serious think about this. We might have to break out the reciprocating saw. Guess something else that can go. I guess there was either a well, what was on there? A radio. Well, it could have been anything. Can it? A radio or a GPS or whatever. <coughs> this is the wire. The hole there for the wire for the power to it. Let's see went in there and the pilot would be sitting here and he'd be able to see it or use it depending on what it was. Yeah that's just something else that can come out. I still love it. I still love this boat. It's awesome. It's got so much potential. I can't wait to get it in the water. I was going to get it in the water this afternoon actually but I've left it a bit late now. High tide's at 5.30 and the nearest um, Dock is Exeter um, and 5.30 around Exeter and around Exmouth it's heavy traffic so I, I, won't, I won't bother I'll probably leave it till next week when the tide's different okay update so while you're in having your tea I decided to carry on and I got the diamond tipped angle grinder out and this is what we found. So, what I didn't mention before, and I actually did know, was that this seat is in sections. Let's see if I can get the angle right. That section there, you see, is actually blanked off anyway. So what I did was cut up to that. Um, so we've still got a good usable seat there uh, and this section is free 
So that's quite handy. But look at this. This has found its way in through the little gap in the side there when the seat was here. And it's found its way in. It's all, what's it, manky string? Yuck. Ugh. What's that? Yeah, there's a bit of a void there, you see. Oh well. If when we, oh, you can see the, oh, you can see the glass there as well. That's not good. Uh, I haven't got a brush up here. I should have a brush up here. I don't think I have that. Let's see if I can make it better. That's a piece of a uh, crustacean. Somebody's been fishing in my vessel. Yeah, so that's obviously the the CSM, the chopped straw mat there, chopped um, strand mat. You can see through there, um, and it would have a gel coat over it, but that hasn't for some reason. Hmm. Mm, not sure why. Anyway, but uh, now we're free to drill the next hole in this side. Actually, while I'm on the subject, so what I've just done is I'll wipe this off. Um, and as you can see, this is what it would have looked like originally. Um, rescue orange, that is. It's a lovely deep orange. Uh, and if I... Um, if I buff this and cut it, you know, with T-cut or something, it would be like that because it's lost so much of the pigment uh, within the sun. It's been bleached so much that that um, the UV rays have attacked it, and that was that's the best colour you would ever get out of this. Now, if I spent a week machine polishing it, that was the only colour that would come up, and it's a bit more of a, like a tangerine, isn't it? So, and that's the colour we'd really like is the rescue orange. So I, I don't think there's actually any point in spending any time machine polishing this. I think we'll wait until when we actually get it into the workshop and, and strip it down and, and completely renovate it. But yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Right, let's cut a big hole in it. Right, I'm going to stand at the front of the vessel. And try and give you an idea of whereabouts we're working on this. Here we are. Just about halfway down on the uh, port side. And that seat still doesn't look too bad, does it? Because it's still enclosed, so yeah, that's really lucky. All the screaming and shouting you might be able to hear in the background, by the way, is the local football team practicing. And here we've got some stainless steel A2s.
and here it is so I designed it myself it is a little bit of a beast a bit big you might think but I can guarantee it's gonna be very comfortable to get in and out of the water it's actually quite light as well it's um it's hollow tube so uh, yeah I mean this is the mark one version of course and uh, in the future maybe when we've got some more money behind us we could get this um, made in aluminium or yeah some nice aluminium make it a lot lighter but let's see if it works first so we'll try it this season see how we get on with it